The Haunting of Morella is a 1990 romantic thriller from director Jim Wynorski. The movie opens during a very special episode of Charles in Charge. A young girl, Morella, is being crucified for practicing witchcraft. Therefore, it is the judgment of this tribunal that you be sentenced to death. Don't you think they should have read her sentence before the crucifixion? I don't think those nails are in too tight. She has the power to control men's minds. This is true. I've seen Blown Away. She has sex with both the Corys in the same movie. Morella warns her husband Gideon that she'll be reborn within their daughter Lenora. El Duce sticks a red-hot poker in her eyes, and they leave her corpse as a warning to other witches. Seventeen years later, and a guy named Guy is riding into the least believable matte painting. Let me see if I can do better. Nailed it. Lenora's grown up and looks exactly like her mother. Guy's an appointment with Gideon. He's here a minute, and he's already scoping out the daughter. Good evening. After Morella's death, Gideon was cursed with blindness. Guy's there to inform Gideon of a trust fund that was set up for Lenora that she'd inherit on her 18th birthday, which is three days away. He needs Lenora to sign the papers, but Gideon refuses to let him see her and kicks him out. Lenora's sad that Guy's leaving, and holy shit! That's a huge bitch! This is Lenora's teacher, Miss Devereaux. Come, let us get back to our lessons on Spain. Is it true that the rains fall mostly on the plains? Miss Devereaux gives her a dress from her late mother as a birthday gift. Nope, she's not evil or anything. That night, Lenora's playing the piano, and the maid Diane is making googly eyes at Miss Devereaux. Lenora goes to her room and finds her father's diary. She reads it, and we get a nice flashback to how Gideon met Morella. This looks like a deleted scene from Phantasmagoria. Morella's developed a life-threatening illness, so she starts dabbling with witchcraft to find a cure. In hindsight, that probably wasn't a good idea. Morella gives birth to Lenora and begins to work on a spell to make her immortal. Since this is a Wynorski film, random gratuitous nudity. Morella kills the servant girl and bathes in her blood Countess Bathory style. I want to coat myself in blood, but ew, not get any in my hair. Why is she making butthead face? The final part of her ritual was to sacrifice her daughter, but they stopped her before she could, which led to the beginning of the movie. Wow, so that was the history of my parents. Still a better love story than Twilight. More nudity and shots of women's feet. Diane comes in to put the moves on Miss Devereaux. There's a lot of lightning in this movie. Miss Devereaux's casting a spell to try to resurrect Morella. Fly from your grave. Lenora hears a noise, so she goes to investigate. Cat scare! They never established they owned a cat, and we'll never see it again. More lightning! Gideon finds Lenora in the main room and makes her go back upstairs. The next day, he gives her the documents about her trust fund. Does Miss Devereaux have an expression that isn't bitch face? Miss Devereaux sets up a meeting between Lenora and Guy. Lenora is not amused by her constant boob fanning. Guy meets up with Lenora and they go for a walk. This looks like the cover of a romance novel. Actually, if you take out the witchcraft, this could be a romance novel. Why is he walking like Frankenstein? They wander off the property and make their way to the cemetery. Way to go, Guy. Take the girl you're courting to the place where her mother was brutally killed. How do you hide your boner with those pants? I want to kiss him, but I'm too shy and- Ah, fuck it! Guy heads back to the office, and Lenora investigates the mausoleum of Morella. They must spend a fortune on candles. Lenora makes the way to the remains of her mother. Miss Devereaux traps Lenora, and Morella's spirit enters her body. I'm sure no one will be suspicious now that her voice is deeper and has built-in reverb. I can feel her. She struggles within me. Miss Devereaux takes Lenora back to the house. Once she wakes up, she doesn't remember what happened. Oh good, finally an exterior evening shot that isn't lightning. More random nudity? The girl heads back to the main house. She hears a noise and heads into the mausoleum. Here's a tip. Don't ever do this! Miss Devereaux knocks her out and drains her blood to give to Morella. Smoked, rotting corpse. I can't imagine how bad this must smell. Morella's body begins to reform, and why are the tits cut out of her dress? Did we need to see the boobs of a corpse? Ah, it's good to see Cher's acting again. Guy goes on another date with Lenora. Yet I still can't help but feeling that there's someone inside of me. I can help you with that feeling. There's been far too much dialogue, so they break it up with some more stock footage lightning. They take refuge in the old caretaker's quarters. Guy starts a fire, while Lenora gets repossessed. Morella's now in charge, and Guy doesn't seem to notice that her voice is suddenly several octaves lower. Well, to be fair, if circa 1990 Nicole Eggert was coming on to me, I probably wouldn't notice if I was on fire. She throws him down, and immediately, his shirt disappears. With the amount of people who have sex here, you'd think someone would have fixed the roof. Over in the house, Gideon's playing the piano. The blacksmith comes to tell Gideon that the servant girl has gone missing. Gideon immediately knows it's the work of Morella. 
The butler confronts Miss Devereaux, who is very suspicious. Diane also confronts Devereaux about the missing servant girl, only she thinks she's cheating on her. Devereaux tells Diane to meet her out at the lake, which I'm sure isn't another excuse for some more nudity. Lenora comes home and Gideon realizes Morella's taken her over. Morella's checking out her body and suddenly, a Cradle of Filth video starts. She gets sucked into the mirror and is now in the land of the Virtual Boy. She sees someone having sex with Guy and, ugh, Butterface. The town corners her and tells her she's going to be put to death for witchcraft, so she runs away. Oh, if only we didn't leave a gap big enough for her to escape! She opens the box Devereaux gives her, and it's full of bugs and her mother. It was all a dream, of course. Or was it? The blacksmith's searching the grounds for his girlfriend, and heads into the most popular location, Morella's mausoleum. He finds Morella, and why wouldn't you run away screaming? Morella drains the life out of him, and yikes. She's still not looking so great. Oh, that's what's left of him. She seems to be doing better. Messy, but better. Devereaux meets Diane under the waterfall, wearing the most epic pair of granny panties ever. Diane swims over and gets murdered. Guy comes to ask for Lenora's hand in marriage, and Gideon tells him Morella is taking her over. But isn't she partially formed in the crypt? I'm confused. Guy doesn't believe him, so he tells Lenora he's gone mad. While heading back to town, Guy finds the body of the missing servant girl. Wow, could she have disposed of the body in a worse fashion? Shove her in a shallow grave with her arms sticking out five feet from the road. Guy takes the body to the doctor, who tells him this reminds him of the murders Morella committed. Guy rushes back to the house. Thanks for watching my horse, Michael McDonald. Horse riding montage. More lightning. If I removed all these lightning inserts, the movie'd be about 15 minutes long. Lenora heads into the mausoleum. The butler tries to stop her, but Devereaux kills him. Lenora finds her mother, who makes a dramatic entrance. Why is she in a standing covered coffin all of a sudden? Guy finds the dead butler, and Devereaux tries to kill him, but the doctor shoots her. Lenora escapes. Gideon makes his way to the cemetery as Morella leaves the crypt, and he sets them both on fire. The lightning blows up the mausoleum, because why not? Morella's dead. Or is she? <laughs> And now Lenora will be on this season's 18 and Pregnant with the undead soul of my mother. The movie was filmed mostly in Topanga Canyon, California, Malibu State Park, California, and Roger Corman's Concord Studios. The movie was shot simultaneously with the horror comedy Transylvania Twist. To save money, they reused most, if not all, of the same sets. The movie was loosely based on the short story Morella by Edgar Allan Poe. Corman had a fascination with Poe and shot his own version of the story, as well as other Poe stories, for the anthology Tales of Terror. Wynorski took on the job of directing Morella because after doing a string of horror and sci-fi, he wanted to do something different. Wynorski's favorite show growing up was The Man from U.N.C.L.E., and his dream was to one day work with Robert Vaughn and David McCallum. He cast Vaughn for Transylvania Twist, and as luck would have it, he was able to get McCallum for Morella. So he got to work with his two favorite actors on essentially the same project. Lana Clarkson was cast as Miss Devereaux. She was a Corman favorite, appearing in Deathstalker and Barbarian Queen 1 and 2. At nearly six feet tall, she towered over many of her co-stars. Sadly, in 2003, she was shot and killed in the house of record producer Phil Spector, who's currently serving 19 years to life for a murder. A young Nicole Eggert was hired to play the dual role of Morella and Lenora. She just ended her run on Charles in Charge, and this was her first project now that the show is finished. Rather than have her voice dubbed, whenever Lenora spoke as Morella, they just took her audio and pitched it down. The town set was built in the Corman Studio parking lot, the waterfall set was also built on the parking lot. It was a cold night and the water was freezing, so the actresses weren't too happy about the scene. On the other hand, across the street was a bus depot, and the drivers were quite happy to camp out and watch them filming. The building interior was shot on the same stage as parts of Wynorski's chopping mall. The lightning was from the movie The Ten Commandments. The footage had fallen into a stock library and has been used in numerous movies since. Wynorski made the film as a tribute to old Italian horror, specifically Mario Bava. Some scenes in the film were homages to Lust for a Vampire. The Haunting of Morella is one of the classiest films in the Corman catalog, and arguably the best-looking film Wynorski ever shot. The sets were great and looked light years beyond many lower-budgeted period pieces. On top of that, the use of lighting was impressive and greatly added to the film's atmosphere. While the corny dialogue and fairly abundant nudity was a reminder that this was a lower-budgeted horror exploitation, the attention to detail as well as the solid performances from the cast more than made up for it.
my flesh needs sustenance.